Hello, Bravos. Uh, it's Alex here from Manchester. Um, uh, last Saturday, I did a, I ran a photography workshop with some of you uh, on composition and perspective. And uh, I've been asked by Alice and Sue to do a little recap of some of the main things that we covered. Um, it was a really great session. Um, we started with sort of looking at um, some examples of how different sort of uh, methods have been applied in classic photography. And then we uh, went out for a photo shoot um, ourselves and discussed what we found um, out there in the wild. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm just going to recap on what we did. I'm just gonna share this screen. I've got some slides. Um, so yeah, we started with composition. Now composition, is essentially, uh, it's about how the different features of an image are arranged inside your frame in order to create sort of interesting, what interesting kind of communication among the, the different features. So one of the way, one of the sort of tried and tested ways of doing this is using the rule of thirds. That's what it's called, the rule of thirds. And the rule of thirds is a very simple way, tried and tested, of creating sort of an interesting kind of communication amongst the features of your image. So say you wanted to take an, a picture of your inside your living room, what you do is break up the image uh, along the vertical into three and along the horizontal into three, as you can see with these orange lines, and then at these intersections between the lines, that's where you place the subject. So your subject is what the sort of like most important aspect of your image that you want to draw the eye to, uh, draw the person who's looking at your photograph's eye to. And in this case, it might be your beloved cat. So you place that near one of those blue circles there. So let's take a look at how this is used um, in uh, some of the classic photography. Here you can see a sort of passionate kiss amongst a young couple uh, just as the Second World War has ended. So what the photographer did was use the rule of thirds here. The passionate kiss is kind of near that intersection. And then what your eye does after that is be drawn to like the other, um, the other expressions on people's faces and sort of the general atmosphere. So the journey your eye goes on is first the kiss, this passionate kiss, and then it takes in the kind of atmosphere of the whole event. Um, and this is kind of like a, a sort of interesting dialogue going, uh, going on inside the composition. This is one of my favorite ever images um, by uh, Cartier-Bresson. And uh, he's used the rule of thirds here as well. He's rather expertly uh, managed to capture this cyclist flying down the hill at where those two lines are intersecting. But what you can also do is put other features of the, uh, of the image running along these lines like this. You see how those banisters uh, with the blue lines are uh, going along the, uh, some of these lines of the grid? Uh, what this what this does is basically frame the image in in a way that uh, is sort of spatially um, quite pleasing to the eye. One final thing you can do is fill up the grid. So fill up these uh, fill up different sort of sections of the grid with particular features, which is what Robert Frank did here. So that was the rule of thirds. Then we looked at uh, other styles of composition. So uh, center and symmetrical composition. So say your, uh, your cat is extremely important to you. Uh, you want to, and, and you want to draw the attention uh, uh, of, the, of the viewer to your cat as the main subject. What you can do is put, put the subject right in the center. Uh, and this is quite a powerful way of drawing uh, the viewer's eye to whatever you uh, want to draw their eye to, essentially. Uh, you can also arrange the image into a sort of sy uh, symmetrical composition 
And what this can do is create a sense of kind of balance and harmony uh, within the image. Um, so some examples of that is uh, Andreas Gursky is kind of like a master of using symmetry with architectural photography in order to create these kind of striking visual patterns. Uh, there's two lines of symmetry there, at least uh, vertical and horizontal and possibly even uh, some diagonal ones. And on the right here, Diane Arbus uh, captured this iconic image of identical twins. And there's not really another way that you could compose this, I don't think, because uh, what the composition is doing is basically emphasizing that mirror image of these two siblings. Um, and symmetrical composition is kind of an interesting one to me, because uh, as you can see with uh, the, uh, the Beckers here, they they are quite famous for documenting different styles of architecture. So these are water towers and what they've done is compose each water tower in exactly the same way in order to kind of standardize, um, standardize the way in which it's, uh, in the, the way in which it's composed. So we can kind of see the different variations on the same kind of functional thing. So this is something that you could think about, about if you want to um, bring something like this into a project of your own, you could think about, okay, um, let's compose this image in exactly the same way each time, but use a different example. Uh, so you could do different types of apples or any other fruit or, uh, you know, buildings in your local area. So that's something to think about in your own photography. Then we look to perspective. So one thing in perspective you can do is use leading lines to draw the eye into the image. So what Ansel Adams here has done has uh, he's positioned himself uh, in the Tetons National Park in America in a place which allows the uh, allows for an image where the uh, eye is drawn along this river and towards that bulk of a mountain in the background and then down the valley. So uh, lines can be used quite creatively to draw the eye in a manner that you want to as a photographer. Uh, this is quite obvious, but bird's eye view is often uh, quite useful to think about. I often find quite interesting things just on the ground as I'm well, interesting is subjective, I guess. It, probably a lot of people would think the stuff I take photos of is quite weird or not that interesting. But anyway, the point here is to kind of think about, uh, think uh, laterally about kind of uh, the ways in which you're sort of pointing the camera either down or up. So worm's eye view is the opposite to a bird's eye view. And this is all about kind of getting the camera quite low or pointing it upwards to create these fresh perspectives on stuff that you might kind of see every day in your home. Um, so this is a this is a really sort of interesting way of opening up kind of uh, interesting creative results. Uh, one style of photography that was quite uh, popular among uh, the members who joined for the session was macro photography. Macro photography is all about getting up close and personal with your subject in order to kind of uh, investigate its kind of um, its texture um, or just, yeah, draw attention to the small features of uh, particular subjects. And I think this is like a really good way into starting your own project in your home or in your garden, um, because you can just zero in and kind of like um, get in amongst this world, this kind of small world that you're, uh, you're not usually kind of necessarily aware of. Uh, and as you can see, Edward Weston did a, a series on peppers. Um, framed kind of similarly there, sort of like the water towers we saw before. Um, one tip I'll give you for macro photography is that if you want to do it in your home, 
is to get a desk lamp and maybe a sheet of uh, sort of black material, place your subject, whatever it is, uh, on the black material and play around with the placement of uh, the desk lamp um, on the image. Uh, and you can create these quite dramatic uh, results, as you can see uh, on the screen now. Uh, you can also obviously get outside and investigate the kinds of textures that you can see in the natural world. Um, that, I quite like doing this actually, like uh, in, on this image of the dry shrub, kind of got my camera right into a right into the bush. So uh, there's bits of stick that kind of like ghost out on the front there. And you can also obviously uh, combine uh, the different the different Styles. So this, this combines macro photography with rule of thirds. I just put this up because this is a really sort of, um, I basically got um, the participants to have a think about what they reckon these things were. Uh, and uh, on the left, we had some guesses. So marbles or planets, uh, but actually uh, you'll be some of you might be surprised to know that it's the bottom of uh, frying pans. That's what this is. Uh, and on the right is an aloe vera plant. Um, so this is just a, a way of showing that, you know, stuff just at your home, inside your house, can be sort of uh, thought about in these really interesting um, creative ways. I also... Um, introduce some like useful practical tips. Um, you can turn on a grid on your smartphone camera in order to aid you in kind of visualizing this uh, rule of thirds idea with the grid, if you remember that. Uh, of course, if you're using, um, if you're using just a DSLR camera, you can still, you know, visualize that grid. Um, so, you know, this isn't just uh, something for smartphone cameras. Another tip, it, which is incredibly obvious, but it's of, often I'm taking a photo on my smartphone and I'm like, oh, why does that look so rubbish? Um, and it's often because you just basically need to like clean the lens. I know it sounds really obvious, but um, that's a easy win there. Uh, another thing is that you can, uh, especially with macro photography, you can tap on the bit of your image uh, that you want to be in focus. And at the same time, that also sets the correct exposure for that area. Um, so you can create these different um, styles of sort of uh, focus. And similarly, you can, um, once you tap, you can also slide your finger up and down. Well, this is certainly what happens on an iPhone. Uh, you can slide your finger up and down to uh, manually adjust the, uh, the brightness of the image before you take it which is quite useful. So after all of that, after all that mouthful, uh, we went out and did 30 minutes of photo capturing. Um, I, was, I was really, really impressed uh, by the results that came in from the uh, Bravo 22 members um, and really encouraged actually, because a lot of what they produced was using some of the stuff that we covered in the um, in the session. Um, and so here I, I actually embedded the photo, uh, the video that Alice made of uh, some of the examples. So here's Tony, that was a, a spoon with some tea bags. Uh, you just wouldn't think that, would you? But um, yeah, some really great examples of how these, uh, how there's macro photography. Central composition from Rob with a painting he did actually. Very abstract work from Sue there. Nice balanced image from Michelle. Yeah, great lighting on those coffee beans. Oh, good macro photography there from Claire. That's mine. Don't need to look at that. And there you have it. So it was a it was a really productive session, and I hope that um, those of you who did 
uh, who were there at the session can uh, use this to jog your memory about what we discussed and what you might want to start working on with your own projects at home. Um, and those of you who weren't there, like use this as a as a way of sort of getting into um, thinking about how you can find photographic opportunities all around you. Um, it can be quite daunting uh, to go out or to start taking photos. Often I think, oh, you know, maybe I won't sort of capture anything that's that good. But actually you learn a lot just by getting over that initial hump and just like doing it. And it's often quite gratifying quite quickly. Um, that's it from me. Um, and I just want to say that, yeah, the set, I've really enjoyed the session and I hope this video is useful for you in thinking about uh, what you might do in your own projects at home. Um, yeah, that's it from me and take care everyone. See you soon. Bye-bye.